Welcome to your second set of notes for World History 1. We are going to cover in this set of notes early civilizations, and we will also cover some of the early eras of human history, known as the Paleolithic and Neolithic eras. But we will start with early civilizations. We're going to start out by looking at four specific civilizations uh, that have been studied by archaeologists. These four civilizations, um, or sites, as you could call them, are going to be Stonehenge, Aleppo, Jericho, and this last one here is pronounced Katalhayuk. We're going to take a look at each of these individually. So again, these are four sites that archaeologists have uncovered, and they are uh, using the artifacts that they find at these locations to learn more about the civilizations that lived in these places or that created these sites. Each of them is located in a slightly different area, some further away than others. We'll take a look at a map in a moment at exactly where each of these was, uh, but for reference, Stonehenge is located in England. Both Aleppo and Jericho are located in the Fertile Crescent, and we will cover on the map exactly where that is. And then Katalhayuk is located in Anatolia, which is present-day Turkey. So let's take a look at each of these specifically. We'll start with Stonehenge. Again, Stonehenge is located in England. Construction for Stonehenge began during the Neolithic age, uh, and it's not going to be finished for quite some time. It's going to be something that is created over a long period of time. It is listed as one of the ancient wonders of the world. And a big reason why it's one of these ancient wonders is we still don't know exactly why this site was created or even how it was created. The time period that Stonehenge was created during, uh, they didn't really have the tools to be able to do what they did at Stonehenge, to be able to lift these boulders on top of these others. It would have been very, very, very difficult uh, it would be much easier in the time of the wheel or the pulley system, but that doesn't come until later, and much later. And so we don't really understand how they even created this during that time period, and we don't know exactly what the purpose of this site was for, for the people who created it. There are many different theories, but there's really no exact known purpose. Another site that archaeologists are studying, well, two different sites, are Aleppo and Jericho. Both are cities, and both are very, very ancient. The city of Aleppo is the oldest city. It is now destroyed by war. It has been destroyed by war, uh, but it is considered to be the oldest city that exists. And Jericho is the oldest continued living settlement, which means there are still people today that live in Jericho. So Jericho is the site or the city that has been lived in for the longest period of time in human history. Both of these cities are located in the Fertile Crescent. So if you take a look at this map, and we'll look at a bigger map in a moment, this here is the Mediterranean Sea. And to the east of the Mediterranean Sea, we have the Fertile Crescent between the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. Uh, we have the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the Fertile Crescent here. And they're going to be a focus of study in this first unit. But Jericho and Aleppo are going to be located off of the Mediterranean Sea here in the Fertile Crescent. Again, we'll take a closer look in a moment. So we've talked about Stonehenge, Aleppo, and Jericho. The final one we're going to talk about with these early civilizations is Katalhayuk. Now, Katalhayuk is a Neolithic settlement, and we'll talk about what that means in a moment, and it is currently under excavation in Anatolia. Anatolia today is known as Turkey. It was once known as Anatolia. Excavation means the archaeologists are currently studying it. Uh, they're currently doing digs, trying to find new artifacts, and so this is a very uh, modern day study of the ancient world. So here uh, we're looking at the same map as we just looked at for Aleppo and Jericho, which would be found here in the Fertile Crescent. 
Catalhuyuk is going to be located over here in Asia Minor, in Turkey, today Turkey, what was once Anatolia. So we look at these four different early civilizations. Where are they on a large scale map? So if you take a look at this map here, the white on this map is all land and the blue is water. The best way to reference where you are on a map is to find Italy. Italy is here, it looks like a boot, right? A large boot. And so that's the best way to always find where you are. So we have Italy here. We have Northern Africa here. Here is Anatolia, modern day Turkey. We have Spain. This here is Europe and this is England. So if we were going to find Stonehenge, we would be looking here in England. If we were to find Catalhuyuk, currently under excavation, we would look here in Anatolia, modern day Turkey. If we were looking to find Aleppo or Jericho, we would be here to the east of the Mediterranean Sea in what is known as the Fertile Crescent. Those two cities would be found here. So again, four early civilization sites or um, building sites that archaeologists till today still do study to learn about the civilizations that created them or that lived there. Next, we're going to talk about some phrases you may have heard me say in that last section, the Paleolithic and Neolithic eras. So history is split into different time periods, and usually those time periods are based on uh, what was going on at the time, what the focus was at the time. So we're going to talk about the Paleolithic and Neolithic eras here. The Paleolithic era is really going to be focused on the basic needs of humanity. So this is going to be when we talk about early, early man. And I have here for you Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow uh, was a psychologist who came up with this idea of a hierarchy of needs that the very, very basic needs of any human being would be the first things that would have to be achieved before they would be able to find any of the psychological needs, the self-fulfillment needs that come later. Without these basic needs, food, water, warmth, rest, security, safety, without these basic needs, nothing else is going to be able to be accomplished. And the Paleolithic era was very much about these basic needs. You could think of the Paleolithic era uh, to be very similar to some, maybe some TV shows you've seen, if you've ever watched the show Lost, uh, or if you've ever seen Survivor, which is a reality show. These are about survival in the wilderness or on an island. And you could really compare those to the Paleolithic era in that the focus is food, water, warmth, rest, security, and safety. So the Paleolithic era is going to be known as the Old Stone Age, and the Neolithic era is going to be known as the New Stone Age. Now here I have some Walking Dead references for you, if you're a Walking Dead fan. And the Paleolithic era would be like the stage in the Walking Dead where they were strictly looking for food. That was their sole focus. They were on the move all the time, looking for their next meal, trying to survive. In the New Stone Age, the Neolithic era, we're going to see the development of agriculture or farming. The development of farming allows people to settle or stop moving around and really focus on building communities, building cities, and that is going to lead to the civilizations uh, that we end up studying, and even to today. So the difference between the Paleolithic and Neolithic era, while there are many, the big picture difference is going to be the development of agriculture leading to the Neolithic era. Let's take a closer look at the Paleolithic era, or the Old Stone Age. The Paleolithic era began around two and a half million years ago, and it lasted until about 8,000 BC or BCE. If you remember 
from our timeline practice. The Neolithic era, in contrast, again known as the New Stone Age, will begin around 8000 BC or BCE, and it will go to about 5000 BC or BCE. Now there is an era in between the Paleolithic and Neolithic known as the Mesolithic or Middle. Um, just an easy way to remember, Meso, Middle. Uh, but that is going to be kind of an overlap between the two. There's going to be a lot of progress made during these eras. The Paleolithic Age, again, also known as the Old Stone Age, uh, we will see things like cave drawings. We will see art in the Paleolithic era. See, here's another representation of cave painting. We will also see statues created, uh, and we will see a lot of um, simple, simple tools that are used for hunting and for gathering food. The Paleolithic era took place during the last ice age. The last ice age ended about 10,000 BC or BCE. Uh, so the Paleolithic era will last a little bit longer than the last ice age, but that will have an impact on this transition between the two. So during the Paleolithic era, men and women are going to be nomadic or nomads. Nomads are people who wander from place to place instead of settling down. They're going to live in groups of 10 to 20. This is because if you are constantly on the move, you aren't going to be able to keep track of hundreds of people. You're not going to be able to feed hundreds of people. You can only have in your group the number that you can get those basic needs for. Food, shelter, water. And so if you have too many people, you won't be able to achieve those basic needs. Groups of 10 to 20 nomadic groups during the Paleolithic era uh, will get their food from hunting animals and collecting plant foods. This, these are known as hunter-gatherers. Hunting, hunter, and collecting food gatherers. Uh, they would hunt animals that they would come across. Sometimes they would have to follow animals or track animals. And gatherers, they would collect a lot of plants, a lot of berries, um, and this would be a very solid food source for their clan. Uh, the group of 10 to 20 are known as a clan. They use stone, bone, and wood to invent tools. So very simple tools like knives, bows, spears, fish hooks. And these would specifically be to help them with this hunting and gathering and defending themselves from predators. During the Paleolithic era, we also see the development of or creation of necklaces and jewelry. These would be created out of seashells, teeth, beads, and they also created cave paintings. The majority of these are going to be found in present day France and Spain, uh, but cave paintings were found in many different locations. Usually cave paintings were made from charcoal, mud, animal blood, or combination. And if you take a look here, the cave art is going to be, a lot of it is going to be animals. And that is hypothesized to be because that was the focus of this, uh, these clans, these early men, these early people, was who they were, or I guess what they were hunting, these uh, animals that they were hunting. That was their food source. That was the purpose of their travels, was to follow where these animals were going so they could continue the hunt to feed themselves. And so the things that were important to early man were the things that they painted on these walls. Very much like today, where an artist will often paint what is important to them, or a writer will write about something that is important to them. It is part of human nature. During the Paleolithic era, we also see the use of fire, the development of oral language, uh, which is spoken language. 
and communication was very important, specifically 